Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a subject in the world of NAS that is very very close to my heart. I want to talk about virtual machines. A number of you when you buy a network attached storage device for the first time, chances are you're buying it for some specific reason. You're buying it for Flex Media Server, you're buying it for widespread backups, maybe you're editing videos that you're making on YouTube like this one, click subscribe. But for one reason or another you buy a NAS predominantly for one single purpose. But once you do buy it for that purpose, maybe you spend a few hundred or a few thousand pounds, you want to use it for other things. You want to maximize your investment. And from there, you start looking at all the other things a NAS can do. So you look at surveillance. Surveillance, the idea of adding lots of cameras around your home or business environment and being able to record those cameras and get alerts for security. You know, that is a thing you can do. You start using some of the editorial software, linking it to things like Microsoft Office or using the first party tools from the likes of Synology as well in their office packages. Maybe you link it to cloud services and start creating like a multi-tiered backup thing. But one of the more popular, particularly in 2020, utilizations for a network attached storage device is virtual machines. The ability to create a virtual computer environment and virtual in most ways. Uh, that rivals that of a desktop computer with a number of advantages that a virtual machine brings to the table. Now, if you have an understanding of virtual uh, you know, machines and why you'd want to use one, and you've used one for years, and you just want to know where to get free VMs from, skip forward a few minutes or go straight to the link in the description to the article where I broke it down. But for those of you that are on the fence and you're wondering about... Do I want to use a VM and why would I want to use a virtual machine? Let me walk you through a few reasons. Reason number one that you might want to use a virtual machine is because it gives you the ability to test or just try out of our operating systems. Now, obviously, the clear cut examples we could think of right now is, you know, you're a Mac user that wants to use Windows. Maybe you wondering about the transition towards Windows in your workflow or your work environment. Or maybe you're an iOS user or an Android user and you want to see what other operating systems are like. So a virtual machine gives you the ability to create that um, operating system in a virtual environment, openable within a window of your existing PC or Mac environment and use that operating system and see how it works with you. Reason number two is it gives you the ability to access legacy operating systems and utilize them in a more modern context. Now, the, again, the most common examples are things like Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows XP, still love XP. There are apps out there that just don't work with Vista 7, uh, Vista, my God, that seems so long ago, Windows 10, you know, Windows 8.1, all these different versions of Windows, for example, there's lots of applications that simply do not run because of incompatibilities with MS-DOS, with OpenGL, uh, you know, uh, DirectX, some of the earlier versions. And although you can select the option often in a PC to run in Windows whatever mode, that is not foolproof. That simply tries its best to emulate that operating system, something that just won't be as good as a VM. The ability to create, for example, a virtual copy of Windows XP to run XP applications, but give it a virtual network adapter and it can then communicate with your existing operating system and the devices in your environment. Reason number three, you might like a VM, is to bench test and update in advance. Now, <clears throat> this will lead a little bit into my fourth point, but you can, for example, create um, a duplicate of your existing operating system and your existing desktop and then move that desktop into the virtual world so you're running it kind of within itself and then you can action an update an individual app update or an entire os update in that virtual field see how it pans out go right that's fine kill it and then move over to your hardware platform and run that update it saves you from you know running an update that could potentially break a bunch of shared folders potentially break a bunch of tools and applications and services that are all running fine until you ran that update. The fourth reason you might like a VM is because you can create that virtual desktop of your existing machine, whether it is wholesale image duplication of your physical PC. And again, that goes for Mac users as well to a lesser degree, but we'll get to that later on, uh, and Android users as well. 
or you just create a hard drive duplicate known as a VHD, a virtual hard disk, you can create a copy of that hard disk with all of the data in the form it is on that disk and then create a kind of default virtual environment, which you can do with a lot of uh, NAS branch technology and QNAP do provide that service, where you can then include and connect the virtual hard disk to go with that virtual computer, thereby seeing if that virtual disk can be created. There's lots of ways in which you can create a virtual copy of your existing machine. And I've got a bunch of videos out there, some complex, some not so. Do check those out. The fourth reason is the ability to, uh, sorry, the fifth reason is to create a single desktop entry point to work on. Now, whether you're working in an office and then you go on the commute on the train and then you go to a coffee shop and then you go home, it's nice to synchronize all those things. Now, you can have synchronized backups. You can even run some versions of Windows on a USB, but none of them, I feel, have got the same pick up and go and deployment and ease of access yet secure that a VM in a single location that is accessible from all of those different places with a steady internet connection brings. You don't even need a strong internet connection to interact with it. It's the same you would have for a YouTube video. That idea of having all of your files in that central location and the central desktop, which can then be ported into via remote connection, is very, very advantageous. And it's something I did for a long time when I had a virtual machine. It was a QNAP that had a GPU card inside, which I was then connecting to when I was in Germany for CBIT, connecting, oh, Miss Seabit connecting to it, doing my video editing remotely, just uploading my recordings to that central virtual machine and then doing all the editing there. It saved me from having to edit on the fly and have a more powerful machine on the go and still have access to the same desktop. So those are some of the main reasons that I recommend VMs to people. But let's get to the meat of this video. Where do you get free VMs? You know, we could just Google, you know, control T, Google, free vms please if you're polite but it's a very hit and miss thing one uh, first and foremost these are big big files these are isos these are uh, often you know vdk images these are massive massive files which you're going to need to download uh, which is already going to be quite taxing on some uh, internet connections but probably a lot worse is the fact that images are big enough to hide a lot of dodgy stuff inside and a lot of these websites you'll go to they may it may be advantageous to them to have your pc have some malware maybe include a few things little add-ons and stuff that you don't want so it's good to go to reputable sources so first up if you want a windows vm i recommend two main places one of them will surprise you the first, uh, the other one won't the first one that won't is of course windows themselves they have an entire evaluation center that you can head over to and the link will be in the description to the article where i break down all of the links for today's video so don't worry about remembering any of this just go to that link um, if you go to windows evaluation center they have evaluation copies of windows 10 uh, both pro enterprise home the what look they've got windows server they have i believe um, up to windows 8.1 currently and you can go there and test all of those vms for around about 90 days each and if then you want to move forward with them you can get an evaluation key or there are ways and means to get free student um, keys as well there's lots of ways in which you can get uh, the keys for those um, a lot of them are digitally signed as well so if you do have an existing copy of windows there are ways and means to do that too now if you're going for earlier versions of windows as mentioned you know 95 98 xp me ce um, uh, Windows Vista, Windows 7, that sort of thing. You can go, in most cases, straight to the internetarchive.org. Just internetarchive.org. Go to their software section, search Windows. They have got so many, not only legacy programs, but legacy OS is there, ready available to download. And I do recommend that. A lot of my download videos and VM videos for this channel have come from that source. Now, if you want to play around with Linux, play around with Ubuntu, going straight to them is always good they will have images there and you have to sign up and register a little bit but it's very easy to download the images from them but weirdly they do not keep the largest record of all of their images they only maintain uh the more recent releases since about 17 there i believe they're on version 20 uh the lt has just been released but 17 18 
19 and 20 are available there. But if you go to a website called um, linuxvmimages.org, that website has an enormous back catalogue of Ubuntu VMs that can be downloaded in multiple forms, both for VMware, uh, there's ISOs there, there's um, VDKs in some cases. You can download all of those files and all of them will run in one shape or form, maybe with a bit of conversion within the software on both QNAP and Synology platforms. Just make sure you've got yourself in good Intel power with CPU and two gig of memory. Also go to that website for some more lesser known uh, VMs as well. They have an enormous catalogue of virtual machines at linuxvmimages.org uh, uh, and again go to the link in the description to learn more. Next, Android. Where do you get an Android VM these days? Well there's actually two different websites that I would recommend for that. Firstly there's Android themselves. You can download a lot of their images but they don't go too high on Android's own website. They prefer it to be um, straight to uh, manufacturer. A lot of that, that's why it's the latest version of Android is only currently available, I believe, on Android's only uh, Android own devices, and even then, not all of them, and some of the Exomi series due to uh, an agreement between them. But there are other versions of Android there. However, if you want to go for more bespoke versions of Android, some customized versions of Android, ones where they've got apps pre-installed, or more streamlined OSs, so you can run multiple Android VMs, maybe assigning them a core or so each. With lesser memory, go to osboxes.org. Osboxes.org, another website that has loads of VMs, but they have a particularly large collection of Android VMs there, and I can't recommend it enough. Um, and I have done Android testing before, but do bear in mind that some of the earlier versions of Android are heavily dependent on the likes of um, a touch screen. So interfacing them with a keyboard and mouse may not be as smooth as you might like, and you might have to go through with keyboard commands for a little while. Um, on, now, it is also worth touching on, a number of you have asked me about this, and I've tried to look into it, about running the Chromebook um, application as a VM. Now, Chromebook isn't, it's not known as Chromebook. It trades by different names, um, and I think it's Debrian or Debrian. Uh, I might be wrong on that one. Uh, the Chromebook OS isn't really downloadable. You can get a kind of stripped version of it uh, downloaded, but I would recommend going straight for the Android. Uh, the later revisions, definitely uh, Android 9 or above, available from OS boxes if you're going to do an Android VM, because once again, it is free, and it will run better than the streamlined Chromebook VM that you can download, because it doesn't have the customization, and the whole point of those Chromebook uh, VMs is they are tailored to the hardware they are in. So downloading it as is, is incredibly limited in terms of its architecture. So that kind of only leaves miscellaneous VMs really, because a lot of VMs either aren't designed to be utilized as a VM, but they're still available, that's why I bung them in this category, or they are NAS related and serve as an alternative to your NAS system, such as FreeNAS, FreeBSD, uh, and a bunch of other NAS operating systems are available. But bear in mind, a number of these will require a great deal more power in your NAS to run them. They're available as images to download, but you will need more powerful NASs to run these VMs. Uh, there's obviously other ones as well, one that we talked about before, Hackintosh, the slightly iffy one there of having uh, the Microsoft OS, OS X, running as a virtual machine. It's not available as an ISO, unfortunately. It's not uh, a simple image transition. It's an executional file, because uh, it has to be. But you can install a rather basic Windows VM from some of the links that I mentioned earlier on, and then deploy from that into uh, the Macintosh VM within it. It's not perfect, but it's probably the best you're going to do. The alternative is to go for something like an Acer Store NAS, uh, where they use VirtualBox, and there is images out there for um, the Hackintosh uh, VM for VirtualBox, and deployment within those will still need quite a powerful um, Acer Store, maybe minimum locker store or above, but it is indeed possible. But this has been where to download free VMs for your NAS. I do recommend VM uh, utilization, not only as a sideline to your NAS to maximize your investment, but also because it, you know, it is quite a useful tool for a number of us to use to kind of 
prioritise our data on our access to systems and centralise our desktop, as well as double checking those firmware updates. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do check out my other videos on virtual machines and make sure that your NAS has both enough hardware resources for the VM, but also to run the NAS. Otherwise, bit of a problem. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more and I will see you next time.